By 40,000 years ago, ancient man was making cutting tools called blades. Blades are specialized flakes with sharp, straight cutting edges. And other characters are determined by preparation of the core from which the blade is etched. Blades were used as they were struck or were hafted or mounted, as are the obsidian blades shown in this replica of American sword. Blades are parallel sided, more than as long as they are wide, and have two or more parallel flake scars running the entire length of the blade on the dorsal face. by pressure from cores held in simple wooden vices. The technique for thin straight blade with a small cone of force and platform remnant. Blades of this type have been found in Premium Mexico. Blade making technique is to strike the platform on the core with a stone hammer. The blow is short and straight, striking above a ridge on the base of the core. As the core is rotated after each blow, the detached blade is dropped from the hand. Hand holding reduces sections or end shock and allows each blade to feather at the base of the core. Percussion blades have a large platform remnant, a bulb of force, and prominent compression ring. backed blade is one of the first series of blades struck from ore. Blade may require a of one edge to protect the hand of the user. This is known as backing and may be done either by flaking or by grinding one edge to a steep angle. This backed blade of obsidian is ready for immediate use or for hafting. It is in a modern steel blade. In describing the characteristics of cores and blades, workers use a variety of descriptive terms. These include proximal end, platform, coach, platform preparation, blade scars, bulb of force, negative bulb of force on core, Compression rings. Harris or ridge. Marginal fissures. Distal end. Dorsal surface. Ventral surface. Various types of cores are Bidirectional opposed angular core. Biconical bidirectional core. Unidirectional conical core. Two ridged tongue shaped core. Bidirectional opposite alternate core. Quartz crystal. Blades can be produced from cores by percussion, either direct or indirect, or by pressure. All blades fall one or more ridges down the face of the core and leave nudes at each edge of the scar on the core. These new ridges serve as guides for the next series of blades. The work progresses around the entire perimeter until the core is uniformly reduced in size. 
When necessary, a platform may be prepared by polishing, scoring, grinding, and flaking. The natural cortex of a rock is often retained. It gives purchase to a hammer or to a punch. This flint core is bi-directional with a single flake platform surface. Because the manufacture of all blades is based on following ridges, it's often necessary to prepare the first ridge on a new core. Cortex flakes are removed by direct percussion with an antler billet or a soft hammer stone, leaving ridges between their negative scars. The flakes are removed alternately from the base toward the tip in order to create the ridge. If the ridge is too sinuous, it may be straightened by striking off the crests between the lateral arc. The first blade follows this ridge. by removing the end of the cobble. The end of the cobble may be set by direct percussion against an anvil stone and by indirect percussion with a punch, large flattened area. The edge of a cobble can be used to detach a blade by simultaneously striking a ground platform lip and pulling down in line with the ridge on the core. A worn, battered hammerstone edge results. The core may be held against the thigh to reduce shock and keep the straight. The cobble edge technique leaves a platform remnant with a thin ground edge and a small cone or bulb of force. Blades made by indirect percussion. The face of the core to be flaked is seated away from the flint worker, the base overhanging the wooden support. The punch is of antler with a blunt tip. It is seated at a low angle and struck with a billet. The blade has a small platform remnant and bulb of force. It lacks an irregular Compression rings are greatly reduced size. prehistoric cylindrical core of obsidian from Mexico was used to produce blades by pressure. This working technique provided the most uniform blades. This replica by Abtree was made using pressure removal of blades. The preformed core is set in a wooden vise and the platform is ground to seat the tip of a touch or step. The tip is set above the ridge. Downward and outward pressure is exerted, using both hands and knees to pass out as the weight of the chest is down on the crossbar of the staff. Ridges left by the previous blade scar guide the removal of the next blade. The core placed in this with two corners free. Of the blade is determined partly by the position of the crutch tip on the platform and partly by the angle of the rib. Remaining on the edge of the core platform must be removed before the next series of blades is detached. If the tip of the crutch is set above the ridge, a blade with a triangular cross section is removed. If the tip is between ridges, the pressure will detach a blade that is trapezoidal in cross-section with two ridges on the face. 
Because the blade edges are freed in the depressions of previous flake scars, they are extremely sharp and exhibit fine feathering of the edges. Most of the blades are straight, but their curvature increases as the core decreases in size. Because each overhang must be removed after a blade is detached, the platform decreases more rapidly than the body of the core. When the platform disappears, the core is exhausted. Pressure removal of blades leaves a flat negative bulge scars on the core. A well-prepared Mesoamerican polyhedral core produced several hundred blades, each remarkably like the others. It represents maximum efficient use of blade material. The prismatic blade is extremely sharp and has an edge with cutting qualities far superior to a modern steel razor blade. Micro cores and blades were made from a variety of flint-like materials, some possibly from pebbles, quartz crystals, basalt, obsidian, and other siliceous rocks. Break the core is the critical part in core manufacturing. Ridges must be established on the core to guide the first initial flake. Also, a crystal must be oriented using the natural ridge side of the crystal allow the blade to be detached. Probably very difficult to get and they were used entirely to exhaustion until the last blade could be removed. Some of the platforms, were, they used a natural surface from possibly a split pebble. Heat treatment was probably used to relieve the strains in quartz crystal, also change structure of the material itself. India cores. Some are made in much the same manner by using a pressure tool but the ridges were made by very careful retouching to guide the first flakes from the core. They're also removed from both distal and the proximal ends of the core. The stones were heat treated, if made from chalcedony and jasper. Hand-held pressure tools were probably with the aid of a clamp for removing the blades. Tension of aid can vary in siding on the material at hand. See the very size, the tension of the blade-like flakes. They were usually pointed. This was because of the core design. As the blades are removed, so is the overhang in some cases. As it becomes smaller, moving a flaky curve, the ideal is, of course, a flat, straight flake with two cutting edges. The platforms are extremely small, and the tool must be very carefully placed on the margin of the platform in order to remove a blade across the face of the core. Tabular piece all removed from the tops of the core to recover so that the next series of flakes may be taken without slipping. The tabular pieces provide an insight as to the first dimension of the core and the length of the blade. By raising a blade on the tabular top of a core and extending the exhausted distal end of the core one can approximate the size of the core used for the making of microblades. Tabular pieces of material were used, allowed the material to be used until it couldn't be secured in a clamp further. Occasional pebbles were used where they had maybe a natural ridge without the individual preparation of the guiding ridge. 
tool was placed with great precision on the margin of the core, and the force applied gradually, first downward and then outward, in order to detach the blades. They are triangular section with a single ridge. Those with two ridges are trapezoidal in section. experiment involves the replication of making some of the Arctic core types. This is a very simple core type. The top of the core will have to be removed. You notice the lateral margins had been bifacially flaked in order to establish a ridge and examine the top of the core. This will be the platform area in order to place the pressure tool to detach a series of blades from the fore part of the core is used to guide the flakes and the first blade detached will be known as a crested blade because it will have the flake scars that show that the core was flaked bifacially. It's very important to place the tip of the tool very carefully. If it is too far inward, the blade will be too thick. If it's too far near the surface, it will crush and collapse, thereby destroying the core. Force pressed and then outward in order to detach the blade. The blades are quite u terminus Examination of the blades show that this is trapezoidal in section, having two sharp cutting edges on both lateral margins. The tabular piece removed from, again from the core, showing the uh, full length of the core prior to blade detachment. By replacing the tabular portion of the core, it shows the full extent of the core. So you can see the bulbar scars See the blade scars on the fore part of the piece of material. It will not be polyhedral because the blades are only taken from one face. A distinctive blade making technique known as the shirataki technique was practiced in Japan. The technique is replicated by preforming the core by direct percussion. Preform is shaped into a long biface, roughly triangular, with a thick lenticular cross section. A long triangular flake called a Buren's ball is removed longitudinally from one margin by direct percussion. This procedure creates the core platform which is used for blade removal. The bifacially flaked margin at the end of the core, created during preforming, becomes edge for the first or crested blade. A short shoulder crutch or a short staff may be used to press off the blades. blades have sharply pointed distal ends. They're usually slightly curved, with triangular cross sections and have small platforms and small diffuse bulbs of The vis lacks an irregular and shows very subdued compression rings and fissures. A 
The blade core of this type is most unusual when compared to the cylindrical or conical polyhedral blade cores found in Europe, Mesoamerica, or Western North America. A skilled worker can produce hundreds of blades from a core of this type. Blades were modified in many tools. One of the most common, the microburin technique, a method of segmenting or dividing blades. This method of dividing blades leaves a sharply pointed piece with are similar to a burin. Blades may be broken into segments for making geometric forms. Rectangles, trapezoids, triangles, and lunates were among the more common forms in Paleolithic Europe. Lunates are made by rounding off the corners of a rectangle. Other tools made from blades are serrated and strangulated blades, on a blade, burins on blades, and double burins. Geometrics made from blades were used in tools by inserting them into slotted pieces of wood, antler, or bone. These replicas have been hafted using wax to simulate resins which may have been used by early man. Blades, whether used as they came from the core, or modified by retouch, or fitted into more complex tools, offered early man unique cutting implements. In many parts of the world, for more than 40,000 years, the blade was the hunter's edge. <laughs>